Pink Poodle Crafts, join the Poodle Pack. It's time to get creative and make you laugh. Make your own art today. Pink Poodle Crafts is the way. What a good boy. Hey, Crafty Family, it's me. And I've got a quick little video for you today. It's not going to be a long one. It's going to be... Um, a quick tip, really. Something I discovered during a live stream that I thought, you know what? Not everybody watches my 17,000 hour live streams. Um, so I thought I would do a quick video on it so that for those who didn't see it during the live stream, we'll get to see it now because I think it is worthy of making a little video on. Um, it's something, like I said, I discovered during my live stream and I was like, huh, that's pretty interesting. So, um, if you don't know, you can, um, you can, uh, print obviously on your jelly plate with distress oxides or any ink really. Um, but what people don't know and something I learned, which I thought was, is the most fascinating thing about printing on your jelly plate with ink is that the distress oxides do not turn to mud no matter what colors you put next to each other and ombre together in the middle where they ombre together i don't care if you put purple and green red and green blue and orange i don't care it'll make up a new color but it won't be muddy it'll look really cool and it, i find this to be just absolutely amazing in fact i need one more color what do i do with it this one there it is. I'll miss one. So I wanted to demonstrate it a little bit because it really is kind of fascinating. And I'm actually going to zoom you in here. Hold on a second. Let's uh, zoom you in a little bit so you can really see. I'm not going to go too, too far, but we're going to do that. Shut off the autofocus so that it doesn't act like a jackass and not focus when I want it to focus. So, okay, let's start with the obvious, like purple and cracked pistachio. And so this is how I'm going to do it. The three colors that I'm going to use and orange. Three colors that totally don't go together, no matter which way you slice it. These colors are not going to go together. So I'm going to put this one on first, this one in the middle, and that one. Or actually, I'll start with the orange. Um... But it's just cool because you can get some really incredible looking backgrounds that you can't normally get because you try to put paint next to each other and it's not going to be as, it's not going to be as cool looking. So you put your, and if you don't know, you take your ink and you just roll, like roll, pick up, roll, pick up. Don't go back and forth, but roll, pick up, roll, pick up, roll, pick up. That's how you get the ink on there. And then you can brayer off. Now, the one thing you do want to do is before you put a different color on, that's going to be a contrast, is you want to wipe your brayer off just so it doesn't screw up your color um, and it looks better. Not because of necessarily mud reasons, but just because it'll look cooler. And now I'm going to put on this purple and I'm going to overlap the orange a bit so that we get like some really cool, so I'm overlapping the orange and putting on this purple. And it's, it, I, I can't even explain how cool the colors make up like, the colors or the inks make up like this new color almost, a color that you wouldn't be able to get any other way if you mix them together paint wise or or any other way you just wouldn't be able to get these colors but it, it's so bizarre how it works out it really is just really weird weird and very fascinating and very cool and i was really excited about it i don't know if you'll be but i was excited about it because the one thing about oxide is like when you spread it out on the thing and then you spray it with water and dip your paper in it is you know as you layer the colors you do notice you don't get mud and tim talks about that and and everything um it's kind of a well-known thing you don't really get a lot of mud um with that 
which is kind of cool. All right, so let's take a print. We're not going to do anything else but take a print so that you can see how cool it looks. Now, I, I, I like using ink on the jelly plate to do like backgrounds for cards and all kinds of stuff because you could stamp on top of it. I've showed that before um, and maybe I'll do that in another video. I don't remember. I've done it in a video before, like, like over a year ago. But look. Now, of course, I didn't do a very smooth job of blending, but there's no mud there. And I overlapped all these colors. But what's cool is not so much here because I, it was so harsh there. But here, if you notice, and I don't know if it shows up, but it almost, and, and it's not going to show up on camera the same way as it does in person. You just have to trust me. It makes almost its own kind of bizarre color. And, you know, it's almost like you want to name it because the green comes through the purple, but they don't mix. They're not mixing. They're not causing any kind of mud. They're living harmoniously together and forming like this strange, like hybrid color between the two of them. It's very fascinating. I'll do another one. But you just got to try it. If you've got oxides and you've got a jelly plate, you know, I suggest using a small jelly plate. It's just a little... A little uh a little easier and i will save this baby wipe because it's kind of pretty so i've been wiping off all my ink on it you want to make sure your brayer is clean so you don't contaminate your inks or your page so let's do let's do uh orange and blue and what else doesn't go with blue? Just orange, really, right? Uh, well, then what doesn't go with orange? Green. We'll do another green. We'll do like this. No, we'll do the lime green. Did we do the lime green? I don't think we did. So we'll do these three colors because they don't they don't go together and they don't go together. It's just fascinating that you can, I'll try to be a little more blendy so it's not so harsh to show you. Try to blend a little better like I us usually do. All right. Let me a clean my brayer off. And then we got the Twisted Citron. I'm using Mermaid Lagoon, Spiced Marmalade, and Twisted Citron. Alright. Let's see what kind of funkalicious colors we get now. Hopefully it'll be a little better blended. Well, the Twisted Citron, I guess, is too much of a yellow green, but still, I mean, it's still blended into each other so well, but it's a very yellow green, so it, it might have kind of got away with being next to the orange. However, 
if you look at this, it made up a, a color in, in the middle here. It's another kind of like a like an orangey turquoise. <laughs> I can't explain it. But it's cool because it didn't turn to mud. It just turned to like this weird turquoise with orange tinge to it. And I, I that's what that's what I find fascinating that I can't seem to get over is this weird like here, let's try this. Let's try let's try this. Let's let me clean this off. I just have an idea. Let's take some ink and put it on the jelly plate. All right, and then we'll clean this off so I don't get orange on my blue ink. And we're not doing that. And then we're going to take the Mermaid Lagoon and we're going to go right over top of it. We're just going to go, you know, right over top and see what happens. And we're just going to mix them together. Now normally, if you were to mix these two colors together, it would turn into an absolute disaster area. But let's just see what we get when we do it exactly like that, where we mix it one right on top of the other. Will it? Will one overtake the other? Or will the other one peek through? Or will they blend and turn to mud? Will they blend and turn to... A, who knows? It's like a... I'm on the edge of my seat. I don't know about you. But let's see. See? They blend together. Like, there's the color. And there's the orange. You put them together and you get, like, this, this green color. But you can see the orange through it. Which is the most fascinating thing to me. Like, I just can't under I just don't understand. It's like its own color. Like, this is what I'm talking about. Do you not get it? It's insane. You have to try it. Let's try a totally... Let's do the same thing we just did. Except, this time, we'll do it with purple and green. Cracked pistachio and seedless preserves. Let's see what happens when we do it with those two colors. We'll put we'll put seedless preserves. I mean, you just can't make mud. No matter how much you try, you cannot make two colors mud together. As much as I've tried to do that, it's very frustrating because I I like the night of that live stream. I was trying so hard. Now, if I were to squirt water on them, then yes. If I squirt water on them, then the game's over. Then they will turn to mud because at that point they will both liquefy and blend. But while they're in this state of pigment ink, it doesn't, they just don't, it's just very weird. It's kind of like how alcohol inks push each other away, except these aren't pushing each other away. They're happily joining together in this bizarre, like, I don't know. This bizarre little dance. Let's see what we get. But you need to try it because you can get you, you can get color combinations for backgrounds that you can't get otherwise. Do you know what I mean? That you know, like let's say you ever wanted to put green next to red or something, or next to turquoise or next to you know something. Well, not turquoise, but or turquoise next to red. I mean. Like, I don't know. See? Like, well, this one, the, the purple is a little overpowering. But right here, I could see where the purple and the green meld together and made this, like, great gr purple, Green and purple? Like, I, you're not going to be able to see it on camera because, unfortunately, things like that don't show up on camera very well. But you just have to trust me. You just got to try it. Let me try it with the green... Um, first and then the purple on top because I think I put the green on top of the purple or maybe a darker green I'm like maybe like evergreen ever evergreen bow and the purple and see what happens let's try that one 
sometimes you get such bizarre colors that it's like insane. Alright, what were we using? Purple? I can't get my brayer clean first. I don't want that color inside of my other colors. And I kind of blended them together a bit. So let's just see. The purple I might take over again. I tried to do it a, di a different way, but we'll see. Let's just see what comes up. Yeah, the purple kind of takes over whenever you do the green and the purple together for some reason. The only thing I could think of is, I'm like, I'm dying to try to get the two to meld together, is to kind of go lighter with the purple, like that. And then, because purple, this purple likes to take over big time. You want to make sure your brayer is clean and also dry, because again, if there's wetness on there, game over, it's likely not going to do the same thing. Let's try, all right, so we put the purple on. Let's try the bundled sage and we'll load up on it. So we only put a little bit of purple, but putting a lot of bundled sage. Let's see what happens now. Just for fun, just for poops and gigs. So these two colors should definitely not be together. I mean, this and this. No. So, I don't know what this is going to cause. This is kind of already a, a muddy green to begin with. See? It doesn't make mud. It just makes this weird purple color. It's like, I don't know if you can see it, but the green and the purple kind of just live harmoniously together. It's not mud. It's definitely this color and this color. And it's like just so weird. I can't explain it. But it's very cool. It's like, a, it's like a whole new color. It's like a purple and a green hybrid. And I don't know what you would call it, but it's cool looking. So experiment with this because you will have fun and you will be like, oh my God, I discovered a new color because that's basically what it looks like. Um, yeah, you got to give it a try. It's pretty cool. And you're, when you, as you roll off, you get like this really cool, again, without mud on it, it's just like you can see the greens through here and the different colors. And it almost looks like if you put 3D glasses on, it would be 3D. That's how it kind of looks. But it's awesome and you got to give it a try. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this experiment with my weird discovery. And I have nobody, I'm sure somebody else has discovered it too before me. Who knows? I just have, I didn't see anything on YouTube about it. That's all. Um, but I just thought it was a pretty neat thing that you cannot go wrong no matter what colors you put together on a jelly plate, which is fascinating to me. So I hope you'll give it a try because it's a lot of fun and you can make up some cool things, backgrounds that you normally wouldn't get with paint or any other kind of medium. So that's it. If you would like to, please subscribe to my video and give this video a thumbs up if you found it to be helpful, interesting, or just weird. I don't know. Um, give it a thumbs up, please, and share it if you wouldn't mind on your social media, maybe on Facebook or, or Twitter or something. Um, yeah, and I'm doing a live stream at 8 o'clock in about an hour. I don't know if this video will go up in time for that, but I am doing a live stream at, at 8 o'clock tonight. It's Friday night, Friday the 13th. So I hope to see you there. Have a good night, everybody. Make sure you do what you love and love what you do and be nice to people. And I will talk to you later. Bye.